We got wolves. And we got white-tailed deer. Look at this. Look at this. If you're a boat owner and you do not have this stuff aboard your vessel, might ought to go ahead and rethink that. And if you're thinking about purchasing a boat or becoming a boat owner in the future, this stuff is definitely gonna help you. Hello and welcome, what's up everybody? I hope all is well out there in your little corner of existence. It's been like eight days, nine days since I made a video, so I figured we better go ahead and do that. Yeah, this one's gonna be a little bit different. We'll do a little vlog style video, show you guys some cool stuff. Full blown tackle tornado back here. I gotta get this stuff straightened up, organized. Really quick, I wanna show you guys something. Some of you guys probably remember when I first got this. I've had this thing back out lately, ripping around on the old 20 inch BMX. Shout out to all my BMX heads out there. I know some of you guys that watch the channel out there also ride. I grew up in like the mid school BMX era, early to mid 1990s models. Bikes were like what were really cool to me back in the day, or even the older stuff. But yeah, the Kink Gap XL, pretty sweet bike. And uh, the modern bikes ride so much smoother than the bikes that we had back in the day, but they don't quite look as cool in my opinion. Shout out to all the BMX heads out there. I'm not gonna go on too much about that. We got something on the agenda today that I've been thinking about for a while. This video I've been wanting to make for a minute. And I think it might help some of you guys out there, especially if you're a new boat owner or if you're considering about becoming a boat owner in the near future. I'm gonna talk about some things that you gotta have on the boat that you might not think about. Some things that maybe aren't as glamorous or aren't as fun as like the tackle and stuff stuff like that but things you gotta have and if you forget could really uh mess up a day out there on the water if you find yourself in certain situations so i'm gonna go over a little list of stuff and i'm gonna show you guys all the things that i keep on my boat to make sure that i have a smooth day on the water i want to give you guys a heads up though i've been out chasing dragons like i said it's been like eight days since we posted a video sometimes when i hit the road and i go out of town these places they got no signal no internet and while i'm out there in the middle of nowhere Sometimes I just like to unplug, decompress, and do nothing but fishing and filming. And then when I get home, I do all the editing and uploading. And that's sort of the phase we're in right now. I've just returned home from being out on the road chasing dragons. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you've already seen a little sneak peek at what's to come. I promise you, we got some fun fishing footage headed your way really soon. So if you're watching this video and you're not already subscribed, which is probably most of you, click that subscribe button, help us grow this beast. We're ripping our way towards 50,000. I would love to have you ride along with us speaking of new subscribers something that i don't even know hang on where is i got that thing where's that thing i don't know i gotta find the subscriber board let's go cooper hang out don't run away let's go let's go see if we can find the, the subscriber board here it is yeah it looks like we need to do a little update on this thing it's been a minute look who it is look who's here we got two little brand new baby deer and mamas that just rolled up. Look at my boy Cooper back here, laying down, hanging out like a professional. He knows he's not supposed to mess with my deer. Look, we got three babies, a mama and three babies rolling up right here. We're gonna hook them up with some almonds. You guys wanna see some baby deer up close? I'll try to get some shots for you guys real quick. This is just gonna be a fun little vlog style video from right here around the house. How's everybody today? Stay back, German. Enzo knows better than to mess with my baby deer as well. I'm sorry. So, Cooper had a little momentary lapse of judgment there. And he spooked off the deer. But as you can see, they didn't even go too far. They're right here just chilling, coming right back. They know we're not going to hurt those deer. Good morning. morning. How you doing? I'm good. You're killing it, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, Cooper, this dang pit bull. He doesn't care about the deer, really. He just wants the almond. And as you can see, the deer don't care too much about him either. But I don't like it when Cooper spooks the deer, so I try to, you know. But the dogs would never actually hurt the deer. They don't chase the deer. They don't try to bite the deer or anything. Our dogs are well-trained. And the deer are also pretty well-trained. We got wolves. And we got white-tailed deer. They don't, they literally don't care about anything but trying to steal the deer's almonds. <laughs> Look at, he got one. Leave their almonds alone. You don't need to be eating their almonds. That was crazy though. Cooper almost got him a baby deer. Actually, he was just after those almonds, I promise. But look at that. Look at that. That little baby deer was curious about that pit bull for a second. But as you can see, my dogs really don't care about the dang deer. It's nuts. Anyways, man, this is every day. 
here in Hill Country at my house. Super blessed to be able to share these moments like this with you. Totally impromptu, like I said, I'm doing a boat equipment video and uh, the deer rolled up, gave us a little surprise. They're gonna hang out with the dogs. This is just members of our extended family here. This one is so curious about the pit bull. Why does, why does this deer want to meet my pit bull? Cooper doesn't care about you, little one. He just wants your almonds. What kind of deer are you? Good boy, Cooper. <laughs> Look at that. Completely nuts. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> oh my God. That's pretty nuts right there, man. Those, those little baby deer get a little close to that pit bull. They don't even know what's going on. All right, come on, Cooper. Get out of the yard. Leave them alone. Go inside. Quit eating their almonds. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Just an everyday thing around here. Shout out to my wife for the work on the camera. She's been helping with some shooting lately. And uh, also, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you guys a, a boat carpet cleaning hack. If you guys remember, in a recent video, we had to tear off our uh, Six Sense carpet stickers. That's kind of a bummer. They got discolored on me, turned red out in East Texas. I don't know how well you guys can see that on the camera, but it was driving me nuts. I'm a little OCD about the boat, so seeing the red on old Junebug when she's, you know, blue on black was freaking me out. So I had to pull the stickers up. That was a bummer and left a little small slight ring of glue or residue on the carpet i'm gonna show you guys the best remedy for getting rid of stuff like that i tried all kinds of stuff but this old school trick ended up doing the work it's like a boat cleaning hack old school boat cleaning hack i'll share that with you at the end of this video but i think we're gonna go ahead and get off into the main portion which is me telling you guys about the gear that you need to have on your boat some items that you might not think about i'm trying to make sure that the dogs don't spook all these baby deer off again uh you know just some stuff that's not quite as glamorous but you have to have on your boat if you're a boat owner and you do not have this stuff aboard your vessel might ought to go ahead and rethink that and if you're thinking about purchasing a boat or becoming a boat owner in the future this stuff is definitely going to help you uh have a smooth go at things should you find yourself in any sort of situation out there on the water or gosh these dogs are almond crazy just like the deer anyways enough of that let's just get off into this stuff stuff that you need to have on your boat that you might not think about let's go ahead and get off into this video it's okay little ones i'm not gonna hurt you they're gonna freak out when i walk up this boat though the heads up there they go all right so the first thing i wanted to show you guys that you gotta have in your boat it's probably one of the obvious ones you know you're probably gonna say duh when i say this but it has to make the list because everybody has to have a set of scales now let me tell you if you guys saw my recent video where i took a trip to amped marine you saw where we designed and built this step drawer for the zx250 these are available through amped marine if you're interested in picking one up for yourself but this is where i've been storing my scales and my extra swim baits and it's been working out great as you can see got a couple traces in there and i got some scales in here you'll notice i have two sets of scales got these right here just a cheap set of hanger scales like this and i also have these Rapala ones. I would recommend keeping a couple different scales on your boat. Why? Because, well, a lot of them aren't very accurate. Sometimes they don't work very well. Sometimes they don't work at all. So it's good to have a set of scales and a backup set of scales. Just so you can compare weights, try to get an accurate reading, and then, you know, if one quits working on you, you gotta back up. I can't really recommend in good faith any set of digital scales for weighing fish. They're all a toss-up crapshoot you just have to buy a set and hope they work for you and that's it man most of the time when i test them uh they're a little bit off on weight and uh it just is what it is man got to get a couple set of scales and keep them in the boat though that's item number one on the list speaking of the list i got a little list on my phone making sure i don't forget anything and the next one also might be a little obvious but in today's world with power poles spot locks, shallow water anchors you might not think about this one but you know it's very important to always have some stupid rope that's right guys dock rope you have to have some rope just in case you have to tie off to a dock uh, you will find yourself in a situation 
where either your power poles aren't working properly or the scenario or the setup the weather the water the conditions are just not perfect to be pulling down and letting your boat sit somewhere on the beach so on occasion i do have to tie off to a dock and having rope on your boat that's just like that's boating 101 you got to have dock rope don't forget that most of the time am i using the rope no 95 to 99 percent of the time i'm pulling down beaching the boat it's all good but keeping rope on the boat the stupid rope go ahead and drop that movie down below in the comments if you know the movie that i'm quoting there is extremely important you got to have rope on the boat let's move on the next item on the list this next little category is a fun one yep, let's hop out. and we'll go back here to the back of the boat something that i see a lot of people post about in the boating groups and asking what kind of transom saver they should use the next item on the list is the transom saver as you can see I use the DD26. This is their newest model, the newest version, but I also have the older version and they work great. I'm not saying that's the one you should use. That's the one that I use. Some people prefer the old school style that actually butts up to the trailer and supports the transom that way. This right here has always worked really well for me, especially on the new boat. The DD26 makes awesome stuff. You gotta have a transom saver and having a good quality one is important. No affiliation with DD26, they just make good stuff. So that's the stuff that I use. So a transom saver, super important. Gotta have that transom locked down. If you guys don't know, this is the device that supports the motor where you're driving down the road, keeps it from bouncing around. Your transom gonna be in good shape as long as you have that thing locked down and secured when you're traveling. Now, in the same little category right here, also from DD26, these right here, steering stops. So what these do is they lock in to either side of the hydraulic steering and they keep the motor from turning side to side as you're driving down the road. As you can see, they just kinda lock in place right here. Snap in and out just like that another killer product from dd26 i used to use the th marine steering stops and i went through i don't know two or three sets of those uh they're trash they will wear out on you the corners get bent up and worn and loose and then eventually motor starts turning on the road and you look back in the rear view and your outboard is leaned all the way over to one side and you're like hey you got to pull over on the side of the road that has happened to me so these dd26 steering stops absolutely i would recommend these and as well as their transom saver like i said dd26 makes good stuff as some of you out there probably know now in that same category from dd26 the next thing that you need to think about getting that you might not think about when you're first rigging up one of these bass boats with all these fancy trolling motors cables and stuff all kinds of live scope and 360 and it ends up being a lot of wiring and having a good solid quality cable wrap or cable cover is important this is also a dd26 product right here this right here a lot of people will just go and put zip ties all up and down that that's not the best for your wiring so having something like this a cable wrap that just velcros around this is a nice quality uh, strong velcro nice material really rugged and it looks good you know makes the the boat nice and clean up here up front this one also from dd26 just like the transom saver just like the steering stop they make good stuff if, if somebody knows anyone at dd26 i've been emailing them trying to get in contact with somebody at the company just to talk a little business and they will not respond to me i guess i am not uh worthy of their time that is okay but if anybody knows someone out there dd26 tell them to hit your boy up no hard feelings though they make an amazing product and um you know happy to show you guys what i'm using on my boat because like i said this stuff just works i used the th marine cable cover as well as their steering stops in the past and the cable cover faded out and turned like light white slash gray in less than a month and uh, the steering stops, like I said, they wore out on me as well. So switched up to DD26 on everything. Transom saver, steering stops, and the cable wrap. And that's been working out great for me. Something else I just thought of that I don't think is on the list. But if you look right here, you see I have this TH Marine, uh, whatever, the Terminator wing nut, whatever they call it. This is so you can just take your trolling motor propeller off by hand. You don't need any tools. You can just remove this. But as you can see, it's like this weird copper brass looking color when I got it. You know, this was the black one. I went, I got the black one to match the boat. It took about eight minutes for that sucker to wear out 
um, all the finish come off of it in the water while it was running and turn into this ugly brass color. So TH Marine, a little bit more affordable. You know, DD26 stuff, it's not, it's not uh, the most economically priced, so to speak, but you get what you pay for, man. You, you, you know, I'm gonna have to replace this already because I, like I said, I'm OCD about my boat and I don't like the way this looks, it's driving me crazy. So I'm gonna have to buy another one and it'll probably wear out and uh you know the paint will probably come off of it too and it'll be looking like that in another eight minutes but that's just the, i'm not trying to bash th marine look they make a lot of good stuff but th that's my personal experience with their products and that's why you see me running dd26 everywhere else and uh, you know i wish this uh, i like this product i like being able to take my trolling motor prop off on the water if i get something caught up in here if i need to work on the motor this is handy that's why i have it on here but it should be black if they're selling it as black. And then, yeah, like I said, that turned to that color in absolutely no time. I was like, what a bummer. Anyways, let's keep rolling through this list, man. Some things you gotta have on your boat, not fishing tackle, but stuff you gotta have to make it through the day. Next up on the list. I don't think that the, uh, the, the prop nut eliminator was on the list, but we're gonna start moving into the tool category now. You gotta have these tools on your boat at all times. And if you don't, you're gonna find yourself in a sticky situation. So I'm gonna show you guys some of the mechanical uh, utensils that I keep around at all times to make sure that if I have a sticky situation arise out there on the water, I can hopefully handle it. Now, I have found myself without these tools in the past and that's a bummer. So let's go ahead and hop into the back compartment here. I'll show you guys what I got going on. Well, by the way, a tools. Shout out to Ant Marine for this awesome tray that they make to go back here in your battery compartment for the Skeeters. It makes this entire space usable. You guys have seen me talk about this here on the channel before. This is where I keep my tools and anything that I may need to use for mechanical maintenance or repair out there on the water. All right, so as you guys can see, big yellow awkward looking thing, first thing out of the box. Prop wrench, dudes gotta have a prop wrench this is just your basic cheap one off of Amazon but I have had to take my prop off a couple different times and when you don't have this it makes that slow drive back to the house uh, frustrating because you know this could really help you out if you don't have a prop wrench get a prop wrench keep it on your boat if you're looking at getting a boat make sure you buy a prop wrench these things are cheap and they will save your day especially if you need to switch out a prop or work on your lower while you're out there on the water. In addition to the prop wrench, I've also got sockets and a ratchet. A couple of them come loose on me, but trust me, they're all in there, even the 10 millimeter somewhere. Sockets, ratchet, that's, you know, might be obvious to some of you, but you're gonna wanna have that, um, makes it, things much easier also some commonly used tools on the boat screwdrivers pliers these right here gotta have these side cutters god forbid you ever get a hook in you deep enough to where you have to use these but um, if you do and you don't have them this is gonna make uh, the ride to the hospital or the extraction much better on you because you can cut that hook away and uh, cut the barb off the hook, pull it back through. These things right here could be a lifesaver. So make sure you have a good quality set of cutters on the boat. These are Craftsman. These are the Craftsman CMHT81718. I don't know if that's a part number or a serial number, but these Craftsman side cutters are quality. That's why I use them. Also, I have a small funnel in here for when we hit if we need to add fuel treatment to the boat, I usually use uh, the Yamaha Ring Free every time I fill up. 89 octane, just rattling off random information as I dig through here. But like I said, hand tools, commonly used tools. Keep all those back here in this little toolbox as well as spare fuses. You're gonna wanna have some fuses on the boat in case you pop one. This right here is also in here. It has a bunch of different, oh, they've all come out. Look at that. Hey, it doesn't matter, they're in there bunch of different tips for uh you know your your screwdriver i'll get that sorted out later that's pretty rough looking but hey things happen when you're running like a screaming eagle down the lake now one piece of tooling or one tool that i have in the boat that won't fit in there it's something that you have to have this is for all those little screw bits that i just showed you a cordless drill 
This is my old Black & Decker handheld 20 volt cordless drill that I have had for years. But this right here is old reliable. I've had it forever, still works great. And this is the one that I keep in the boat. Every once in a while, I just pull the battery out and make sure it's fully charged. But man, this thing right here will make taking stuff apart and putting it back together much easier on the boat. If you don't have a cordless drill on your boat, get one you can get them for super cheap nowadays order one off amazon throw it in the boat it will save your life all right dudes next item on the list something that i neglected to keep in the boat for a long time and then on a trip at choke canyon fishing with my brother from another mother el presidente the owner of six cents fishing casey sobsack i hit a stump in the middle of the river channel with my trolling motor broke my trolling motor prop ended my day until he said hey i got a spare trolling motor prop in the boat no worries and he tossed me his i was able to keep fishing ever since then i came home ordered me a spare trolling motor prop I always keep one in the boat i run the old tricks no matter what kind of trolling motor you run you need to have a spare prop in your boat at all times probably for a lot of you guys out there that have been doing this for a long time it's a no-brainer to me it wasn't broke the blade off my trolling motor ended my day shout out to casey for saving me on that trip we ended up smashing them if you guys haven't seen the the videos from the trip to choke canyon that we put out uh early summer this year go check those out some of the best fishing that i've had honestly ever in my entire life especially from this boat especially by myself straight smash on them man that was an amazing trip can't wait to go back to south texas and do that again but a trolling motor prop is something you have to have and as i'm looking down in here i can also see this one is something that you have to have in your boat in the eyes of the law it's mandatory fire extinguisher you guys probably already know that but you know i saw it sitting down here in the bottom of this uh, compartment so i figured i'd go ahead and mention that really quick you know you got to have a fire extinguisher always important to check your date make sure it's good this one showing green for good so i'm good there oh law dog game warden is not going to give me any trouble you will get a ticket or you know at least a warning at minimum if you don't have a fire extinguisher on your boat a couple more things in here the next thing on the list that i'm going to show you this bad boy a battery jumper this can save your life if you get into battery trouble out there on the water having one of these juiced up charged up ready to go it can give you a quick jump get you started back up and at least get you back to the boat ramp and not leave you out there stranded on the water so this is duracell 750 peak amps i don't know it's got a little air compressor on it a couple other things i just keep this bad boy on the boat just in case if i heaven forbid have to jump my batteries off but one more thing that i'm seeing in this compartment that i'll go ahead and show you that's not on the list yeah power poles sometimes they have issues with the motherboard especially if they end up getting wet so I had power pole send me one of these a while back when I thought I was having motherboard trouble and it ended up not being the motherboard, but I do keep that in the boat as a spare. The motherboards on the power poles are extremely easy to swap out. You can do that from the water, so I always have that with me. But let's keep moving on. You guys saw me talk about the prop wrench and you saw me talk about the spare trolling motor prop, but I have yet to mention a spare prop for the main motor. And as you can see, we got one of these bad boys in there too. This is a Mercury Tempest Plus that I got from my homie Dave. I don't know how well you guys can see it. It's down in there. Also, something that I just noticed while I was editing this video and I thought about ran back out here just to shoot this small clip to show you guys this. Something else that's not on the list but is extremely important, first aid kit. Come on now, you cannot forget the first aid. This thing right here is packed full of, you know, all kinds of general first aid equipment anything we might need to handle a minor injury out there on the boat ran back out here to shoot this short clip just to say you got to have first aid even though it wasn't on the list i wanted to include it because i spotted it sitting in this compartment while i was editing the video all right spare boat prop man super important gosh props boat props yamaha props oh my gosh also fun fact the prop that i'm actually running on the boat right here also dave's because the hub on my yamaha prop cracked under warranty but you cannot get a prop even from yamaha right now so no eta months out i have no idea when uh, i'll get a new prop so shout outs to the mangler for keeping me up and running much love brother i appreciate you more than you will ever know if you're watching this video sincerely thank you man dave hooked me up with the prop that's the, the oem prop for my motor and he also let me hold on to a spare just in case i got in trouble out there on fork i got to get this back to dave at some point but having a spare prop on your boat 
super critical you got to do that if you guys are like enjoying this list if you're appreciating this if this is helping you out please drop me a like leave me a comment and let me know if i've forgotten anything if there's anything that should be in my boat that i don't have in my boat i would love to hear from you guys you're always helping me grow and learn out there on the water i appreciate your feedback and input like i said i've learned so much from you guys and i appreciate you taking the time to guide me down there in the comments help me out on my bass fishing journey my bass boat ownership journey i feel like i've learned a lot since i got my first bass boat this is my second bass boat about my fourth total fourth or fifth total year as a bass boat owner and yeah mistakes were made but you know we made it to this point and i've been wanting to shoot this video for a while show you guys uh, the things that i keep on my boat to help me have a smoother day should anything go wrong or to just make the day easier in general now let's talk about keeping this bad boy clean you know this is not something that you have to have you can totally let your boat go to crap if you want to i like to keep june bug here looking nice in showroom and this pro glide I'm telling you guys this is the truth this is the stuff that i've been using to clean my boat boat looks pretty freaking clean right now but man i'm telling you if i take just a little bit of this purple and rubber down she'll look brand new mirror finish and then their ceramic coating is incredible been using this stuff it's the best stuff that i've ever used to clean my boat i'm gonna tell you guys more about this stuff in the future but i'm super stoked uh to be talking about this because like i said it's the best stuff that i've ever used hands down all the popular boat cleaning products that you find you know i'm not going to name them off you guys already know in my opinion this is far superior and i plan on proving it to you here on the channel so when i get off the water i always make sure i have plenty of pro glide to wipe down the boat a couple microfiber cloths and then i also have this thing out here i'll show you why here in just a second but I went ahead and grabbed my old DD26 transom saver. This is the transom saver that I used to run, their old style. Uh, I believe it works just as well as the one th that I have on there right now. So if you guys find one of these out there in the wild, maybe used, pick it up a little bit cheaper. This is also an excellent option to save your transom. Now, like I was talking about those uh, carpet stickers, those carpet decals earlier. If you look right here, nice and clean. Looking nice and clean, huh? Well. I'm gonna show you guys how we got that uh that that glue that little residue that was left over from those carpet decals me and wifey shot a little piece of footage for you guys i'm going to show you a really awesome carpet cleaning hack for your bass boat full disclosure we shot this footage yesterday but i'm gonna let you guys watch it now check it out All right, dude, so we're up on the deck of the boat now, and I wanna show you one of the best bass boat carpet cleaning hacks ever. You old school guys, you probably already know about this, but if you remember in a recent video, I had to pull my carpet decals off. They got discolored on me, and a lot of reason that people don't like putting carpet decals on their boat is because when you pull them off, you can come look right here. You can see it sort of leaves a little bit of a film on the carpet. You can see a little slight bit of discoloration over here. This side over here was the same way, but as you can see, I've already cleaned it. And this is all it takes. A little bit of water. One of these bad boys. Hey, what's up, dude? No, you're good. Come on up. Jessica? That's her. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I appreciate you, man. Have a good one. All right. So this here is just a brush attachment to my drill. And this right here is one of the oldest tricks in the books when it comes to cleaning boat carpet. The old Barbasol shaving cream. I'm gonna show you guys how well this stuff works. So I tried everything. I tried Goo Gone. I tried scrubbing it with a brush and soap, everything to get this off of here. And this is what finally got it all out and looking brand new. So check this out. This is what you wanna do. And this will work for all your boat carpet, right? Like you don't have to be removing decal residue. Like if you just wanna freshen up your carpet, this works great and you can do it front to back to the whole deck. We're just gonna do this small spot right here to show you guys what's up. So this is how I did it. I just got the, got the carpet wet. First, it is hot out here, so this water is hot. Then, the old Barbasol shaving cream. A good thick little strip. And this is it right here, dudes. This is the money. It's gonna sling it a little bit. That's okay, it won't hurt anything. Hopefully we don't get it on the camera. Now 
now take a towel wipe up all your residue and I'll show you what this looks like after I get it all dry all right so now the last step I just sort of went back and forth with this towel here get it as dry as I can this towel is actually pretty damp because I've already done the other side but as you can see it looks way better than it did and just about every bit of that residue is gone off of that carpet I could do it again and get it even cleaner I'm pretty satisfied with that I'm extremely satisfied with the other side you could never even tell that there was a decal on the other side this one was a little worse for wear but you could take that barbersaw and clean your barbersaw barbasol and clean the entire deck of your boat carpet with that the deer have showed up they heard us out here and they came over here to help but uh yeah that is one of the best carpet cleaning hacks if you guys know a good carpet cleaning hack for your boat leave it down below in the comments but i wanted to show you that because this stuff right here is extremely cheap and it's extremely effective and uh yeah it helped me get that residue straight up out of the boat carpet when the goo gone would not work and there that was guys this thing right here ordered a little brush kit off amazon attached to the drill took that and the barbasol to the residue that was left behind from the carpet decals looking brand new and like i said you can do that to every inch of carpet on your boat fluff it up refresh it bring new life to your boat carpet that's like the, one of the things that starts to go first is the carpet you know it's really good to be able to you know breathe some fresh life into it without having to replace it which a lot of people end up having to do hopefully it'll be a long time before i have to do that here on june bug but that about wraps it up dude that wraps up the list rounds out the list please if i forgot anything i'm sure that i did let me know what i need to make sure i have on the boat at all times if there's something i need to put in this bad boy to help my life easier or to help get me out of a sticky situation out there on the water i want to hear from you i love getting your guys feedback and advice but that's about it dude that about does it as always you know shout out to six cents for helping us do what we do we wouldn't even be making these videos or or uh fishing from this boat if it wasn't for six cents so you guys check them out you know the deal jr tim for the win 10 percent off everything on the website heater series rods back in stock jr10 will give you 15 dollars off the price of every rod bring the price down to like 135 bucks i've been getting amazing feedback on the heater series rods shout out to everybody that has picked one up recently they are gripping and ripping blowing and going and i love to see you guys fishing with my signature line of fishing rods it means the absolute world to me so shout out to six cents fishing pro glide amped marine hope you guys enjoyed the video but that's about all I got for you today, man. That about does it. That about wraps it on up. So I'm going to say goodbye for now, but I'll see you on the next one later. Subscribe for those deer at the beginning of the video, man. That was awesome. I'll see you all in the next one. We're going fishing, I promise. <laughs>